So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, good morning. On behalf of ASB University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to this highly anticipated webinar session, Generative AI and Human Values, Striking a Balance in the Digital Era. Today's webinar uh, aims to provide a platform for critical discussion, insights, and exploration of the intricate relationship between generative AI and the human values. We have assembled a distinguished panel experts, thought leaders, researchers, and industry professionals who will set lights on these opportunities, challenges, and ethical implications arising from the integration of generative AI in our society. Our esteemed speaker will share their expertise, their uh, uh, research findings maybe, and the real world experience basically, allowing us to gain a comprehensive understanding of the impact of generative AI on human values and the measures we can take to ensure responsible and ethical development and deployment of this technology. So I encourage all the participants to actively engage in this webinar, ask uh, you know, that thought provoking questions and contribute to the conversation that will shift our collective understanding of generative AI and its implications. Thank you. So before beginning to this our webinar, I just wanted to uh, know that uh, uh, introduce our esteemed speaker. So our first speaker, Mr. V. Srinivasan Rao, uh, Chairman and MD of BT and BT, utilized his first digital transformation experience to counsel high level executives, preparing organizations for tech-driven industrial revolution. Uh, his distinguished career includes senior positions like TCS, Infosys, IGET, Satyam, and Tech Mahindra. Mr. Rao advocates uh, for lean digital thinking, uh, priming big, uh, businesses for a digital future, and influential community leader. He has contributed to organizations like PMI, IET, and PI Hyderabad, among others. He is a member of BSI's ISO 9000 Blockchain Smart Contracts Working Group and the author of three books, most notably uh, Lean Digital Thinking, Digitalizing Business in a New World Order, published by Bloomsbury. Our second speaker, Mr. Bala, our Bala person pedigree, working with Tata Consultancy Service Limited for uh, 24 years as a principal consultant and chief innovation officer at Communication Media and Technology Unit. Mr. Bala is responsible for uh, driving purpose driven uh, transformation uh, program and uh, technology enablers, research and innovation function. He is a technology thought leader and practitioner in building high performing product development teams and technology practices such as artificial intelligence, enterprise architecture, cloud solution design thinking, DevOps, business analytics, modern workplace, and performance engineering and security. He has currently established uh, a, a strong community network connect with IEEE, CSI, Internet Society, group, uh, Open Group, and FTCCI. Mr. Bala has also worked with several co-innovation network partners to driven technology evaluation program, that is TAP, and the technology adoption program, the TAP to drive product and service adoption within customer community and also jointly drive go-to-market initiative to deliver purpose-driven uh, uh, business growth. He has done master's in computer application from University of College of Engineering, Osmania. He was ranked university first. And Mr. Bala is praising his time to volunteer for CSI, IEEE, FTCCI, Internet Society, and the Open Group. And he is holding a uh, different position uh, currently, like sec Secretary, Internet sec Society, India, Hyderabad Chapter, Co-Chair, Information Technology and Digital Communication, FTCCI, immediate first year, uh, like Computer Society of India, Hyderabad Chapter, July 2022, Board of Studies members, CSE and Artificial Intelligence Department with six different engineering colleges. He has also uh, holding different uh, uh, first position like Chairman Computer Society of India Hyderabad Chapter June 2021 to July to, uh, 2022, Secretary IEEE Hyderabad Section, Treasurer uh, uh, IEEE Hyderabad Section, Chairman IEEE Computer Society Hyderabad Section, also funding board member Computer Measurement Group of India. He is also holding uh, uh, many certification and the credentials like OpenCA Master Certified Architect and Microsoft Azure. Certified Architect. 
our uh, third uh, speaker mr chandra dasaka is an it veteran with 40 years of experience worked both in public sector and private sector worked for 14 years with electronic corporation of india limited ecil and another 14 years for chetan computers and tech mahindra he is a post graduate in statistics and an mba with marketing as specialization from usmani university and another mba from q21 global with business leadership as specialization he is a certified black belt in six sigma certified recruitment analysis analyst certified internal auditor and certified independent director he is an international award winner of idea evaluation uh, sponsored by general motors in usa also recipient of star performer award from sectum computers currently serving as chief strategy officer from delta mars technologies associate vice chancellor of university of emerging technologies california usa member of board governors global cyber security forum and head academic and industry council computer society of india secretary special interest group on big data analytics and csi he is also a member of uh, board of studies of gitanjali college of engineering and technology hyderabad uh, sasi institute of technology and engineering uh, tele college and uh, institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad st martin engineering college hyderabad methodist college of engineering and technology in hyderabad and more and he is a member of industry and institution interaction cell jntu hyderabad member of y4n youth for nation and also a co producer award winning marathi film satrangeli we welcome all of you sir in this webinar session so that our participant can get some valuable insight upon the generative ai and the human values so i like to uh, invite our first speaker mr rao to shed some light on this topic so please over to you yes sir mr mute lo unna thank you professor abhijit mondal so thanks for that introduction i think uh, the topic which uh, you have given is very interesting for the last at least couple of years everybody is talking about it even artificial inter- intelligence was invented uh, long back so today's topic is generative ai and uh, human values so i will share few of my thoughts before we talk about artificial intelligence first talk about what is human intelligence and cognitive abilities if you if you don't understand what is human intelligence and cognitive abilities then understanding artificial intelligence doesn't make sense right there are few things why humans are different from animals right or why humans are so intelligent so let me share few of the cognitive abilities that means the brain capabilities what humans have the first one is the perception we have five senses right we can see we can hear we can smell we can touch we can taste with all those things only we form a perception we form the thoughts we form emotions everything is driven by these five senses if you really observe our life is nothing but five senses what you see what you hear all those things will drive your thoughts your emotions and your thinking and all those things right the second one is the uh, attention the human beings have the ability to have the attention that means uh, um you can probably uh, focus on something then you can shift that focus to some other thing and you can also do the multiple tasks at a time right the human beings greatness is multiple tasks it's not like just only one task i can do then i can't qualify as a human being right the next one is the memory we have a short term memory long term memory or episodic that means if we see something usually we can remember it so that's one and uh, we can learn the knowledge we can apply then the human beings have the great ability to anal- analyze reasoning problem solving right so um, we can learn so many languages right i can, i am from telugu i can learn english i can learn hindi if uh, our honorable uh, former prime minister knows probably 20 languages pv narasimhaoger right so you can probably learn and uh, communicate then you can bring the creativity but two most important things what human beings have are emotions and empathy happy unhappy angry excitement all those emotions are there right but the last i think in my view as a human being we all have is 
the self awareness what is right what is wrong and how i can self regulate i mean people call it different names consciousness right you reach the consciousness where you are aware of what you are i am not getting into that now so these are all the capabilities now the engineers and time scientists are trying to replicate using software is it possible right so to give you an idea human brain has 80 billion neurons 80 billion neurons and it has 1000 trillion connections within the brain and it is impossible at this juncture to replicate the cognitive abilities of humans by artificial intelligence it may take 50 years to 100 years if really works fine because we don't have that much computing power that much of uh, storage power we don't have that much of uh, algorithms brain is nothing but set of algorithms so your emotions whatever are formed with algorithms your senses will create trigger a point then that point will go to the brain and then the algorithms will run so we are trying to simulate that in the artificial intelligence so that's why there are three categories of artificial intelligence one is narrow artificial intelligence what is that narrow artificial intelligence means anything can do only one task you take siri or you take alexa can you use it generally it's not used for everything right they are designed for a specific purpose one purpose or max two purpose and all right so those are called what the uh, narrow artificial intelligence but the second important thing is artificial general intelligence that means we are trying to replicate the human intelligence which is probably 25 30 years away it may take that much time if not nearer to the human capabilities okay some capabilities of the humans you can replicate uh, whatever i mentioned right the perception the emotions the language some other things are happening happening but i don't think we are there at the uh, meta cognition that is the consciousness or emotions or empathy long 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 way to go and also all the tasks what humans are doing for the artificial intelligence to do it will take lot of time the necessary algorithms are required and uh, so much of work to be done that is artificial general intelligence called agi then the third one is uh super intelligence super intelligence here you basically are in a very dangerous situation the machines software become better than the human beings but it is only hypothetical today but people expect 100 years later probably the artificial intelligence will be more powerful than humans it is called singularity then the human destruction may start the robots and bots and all will probably take over the world okay so i think these are all the things we need to understand so what this generative artificial intelligence you are talking about what i said is very general what is the human intelligence artificial intelligence in that there are three categories at all generative artificial intelligence means mostly it is dealing with the text audio and videos and images you understand what i'm saying so they are basically based on natural language processing image processing video processing so on so forth so that is called generative sir. artificial intelligence sir good afternoon okay. sir ंग there is something called gpt4 which is the largest language modeling done by open ai and how big it is you know it is trained on around 1 trillion parameters it has gone through the whole web it has gone through the whole internet content books blogs websites 
what not, right? Videos, audios, everything. And it, I consider artificial intelligence, these models are like the human babies. The baby is born, then the baby learns, right? So the baby learns what is right, what is wrong, and they observe and do it. The similarly, these artificial intelligence algorithms are trying. One of the examples I'm telling here is the GPT-4, right? So it is called a generative preemptive transform or something like that. GPT-4 is a 4 is a version. It is trained almost, it is not at disclosed, but 1 trillion parameters. Okay, that means huge data sets it has taken and the algorithms are trying to respond to any of the questions you give like human being. And that is one. Second is BARD, B A R D. That is uh, another la large language model from Google. Then POM2, P A L M2, POM2. There are so many la large language models are there. These are all called generative A models. Okay. For example, if you take GPT-4, it is uh, probably for them uh, a super computing power. Thousands of GPUs they have taken to train it. Millions of dollars they spent and probably thousand or more than thousand megawatt power is consumed to train that language models, right? And they took many years. So this is called GPT-4. So then on the top of GPT-4, lot of things are happening. Chart GPT is one of the applications on the top of GPT-4. We cannot mix up Chart GPT with the GPT-4, right? So then few of the other examples uh, I will uh, tell you. What are all these generative AI related? Some of the greatest tools developed in the world today are uh, something like, uh, let me show you so that you can understand better. Yeah, look at here. This is uh, something called Synthentia. It is, uh, if suppose in the past, if I want to create a voiceover, okay, like a dubbing, right? We have to pay a lot of money. But today, the, you can, if you give the script in the text, you can have an extraordinary voiceover by this Synthentia tool. You can try it, okay? The voice is of your choice, okay? Today, most of the voices are from Western world, but slowly, Indian voices are also coming out. I don't need to pay a few lakhs to get the voiceover. It is a very simple tool. You can put the text. The text will become voiceover on the video or whatever, audio, whatever, right? Then the other example also, logo.ai, play.ht, all these things are there. A bad I already talked about. Then other interesting thing here I missed out is uh, uh, the mid journey. Mid journey is an excellent generative AI tool. You give the description, it gives wonderful images. You cannot imagine. I generated so many images even for the Republic Day and all, but you have to give a great uh, uh, content what to be generated. And I think Stable Diffuser is another generative AI tool, which will also generate beautiful uh, content. Then you can also generate text you give it, automatically videos can be generated. Videocreator.ai. Right. So like this, there are so many generative AI tools are there. Today, I will spend a little bit more time, next 10, 15 minutes on the text and contextual AI, that is chart uh, GPT. OK, so any questions till now? What is generative AI? Is it clear? Uh, 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 dear participants, uh, the chat forum is already open. So if you have any question, you can raise. At the last, we'll uh, address your question to our esteemed speaker. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Avichit, you are audible. Yeah, you are audible. Okay. Okay, sir, please continue, sir. Okay, you are able to see the screen? Not so. Yes, sir. It's okay, sir. Are you able to see the screen? No, no, we are not able to see. Not, not now. Right? Give me one minute. Okay, so what you can do, 
with uh, this one as i mentioned uh, today i'll spend a little bit more time on uh, you know that chat gpt is an application on the large language model like uh, gpt4 there are so many applications are built don't uh, consider that chat gpt itself is not a large language model it is an application built on gpt4 okay it is uh, basically like that there are so many applications you can build yourself on the gpt4 but chat gpt is more prominent today because it will do all these activities just look at here okay you basically gave some you, you write something a text or a mail or a blog or something you can ask chat gpt hey can you rephrase this and refine this and it will do beautifully and you can give a context okay i want you to write an article on bharat 2047 that's enough it can write you essays it can write you news articles it can uh, just uh, give you movie plot summaries you can ask a situation, okay, and ask you write it something like a plot or a script. Automatically, Chat GPT will give you that. Then it can translate. I think if I'm not wrong, 70 to 90 languages, okay. You can give a language in English, and you can ask it to translate to Japanese. It automatically translates. You don't need translators. You don't need essay writers, right? And next is you can write excellent emails. You suppose sometimes you are in a basically very uh, stressful, stressful situation. You want to respond very sensitive information and all. You ask it to give a suggestion by giving a raw content to that. It can write the tweets based on the one or two liners. I want to generate a tweet on the uh, current uh, situation uh, in Telangana, for example. Then it will give you four or five tweets if you want, right? Then you can ask for. I am doing a campaign in my college. I want some brand names and slogans. Please give me. You don't need to struggle to brainstorm. You just ask it, it will generate it. But after that, you can improve it. That's fine. It can write articles, it can write fiction stories. And I asked a question I am going to induct a CEO. Can you give me the roles and responsibilities of CEO? It will give you beautifully. It can write the job descriptions. If you want to induct a research associate of a particular area, Ask what is the profile you are looking for, or you want to uh, interview a professor uh, from somebody coming in. Then you ask, I think I want to induct a professor of this particular caliber. This is the credentials I am looking for. Can you please create interview questions? Another beautiful thing, you know, it can create you exam papers in the format what you want. You just have to give the you want to subject, and if you want some sort of a content there. You can create multiple choice questions. It can create you um, uh, fill in the blank questions or it will create the hybrid questions and it will reduce a lot of effort for the professors and others, right? It can generate a web layout. I will give, I'm creating a healthcare company. I'm developing a website. And can you please give me the menu items for my website and also the content for the healthcare? It will give you, right? And you want to measure the performance of uh, students or you want to measure the performance of your uh, uh, relationship with industries. You can ask them. I want to quantify my relationship strength with the industry partners. Can you give me some key performance indicators? It can give you. It will give you the screenplay. I asked you how to prepare a coffee. You just gave the recipe and the process total, right? So even it can generate software code. It is coming up. Right, but don't you think, friends, this is going to disturb a lot of jobs. So we don't probably need highly sophisticated artists for a very normal things today. I can go to the generative AI tools. Need not to chat GPT. Chat GPT is only for text today. It is not for voice. It is not for videos. You give the text, then it will get you the text or content answers. Right. So this is what chat GPT. So let me just very quickly, I think uh, let us get into. OK, now all the I think important things I spoke about the positives, but let us look at the negatives. OK, misused by bad actors, right? As I said, how you try a large language model? I said as a baby born in a family, but that family is notorious and then family is basically doing all the nonsense and unethical things. The kid also learned the same, right? Exactly same. 
in I think uh, who is training these algorithms? Bad guys or good guys? What sort of data sets they are sending, right? It all depends on how the algorithms are trained. It all again depends on human beings. Huh? The human beings are the reason even you generate the bad chart GPTs or the bad generative AI tools, okay? Then uh, it can uh, phishing or social engineering attacks automatically it can do. No human being is required. And of course, there will be a displacement of human jobs. If somebody says that, no problem at all. No, it is wrong. Already in the digital marketing area, charge GPT is replacing some of the jobs. OK, and most importantly, what happens is especially students and uh, not that experienced the people. If they start using charge GPT, their cognitive abilities will be killed because they are highly dependent on charge GPT type of tools. Their thinking power will go down. They just simply go and put a question there. And it will answer so that your ability to think will be. Now you look at 20 years back or 20, 30 years back. We can we used to remember the telephone numbers, whatever the number, it doesn't matter. But now I can't remember even any telephone number except mine, including my family members. That means our brains will become rust and blunt with this sort of uh, generative AI tools, right? So the personal relationships may go down. Sometimes these uh, generative AI tools are acting funny. You have seen one of the news item. It is telling that you leave your wife and come and join me. That type of responses are these generative AI tools are giving. It can probably guide you wrongly and it can inject negatives in our mind. And finally, it will change your behavior. It may change the social relationships. It's like other games, what they are doing it, the generative AI tools can create, right? And when it generates a code, you don't know whether it is malicious code or a bad, good code or bad code, right? I think these are all the dangers of uh, chart uh, GPT and other generative AI tools. So now let us go to some of the questions I answer. Then uh, do you want to back? or continue to add GPT in academic institutions. Any thoughts from the professors and students here? Now you understand the power of chat GPT. One student uh, did the homework using chat GPT. The teacher found our friend by mistake not deleted. He just copied what chat GPT has given. There chat GPT gave as a AI generated model. I cannot do this or I can do this. Sometimes it used as a AI generated model. That means when the teacher read that, oh, this is something not written by this guy. That is one. The second one is when generative AI tools generate, there is some counter tools are coming in. You suppose I as a student say that I have written this my home. I can run that through another AI tool and find it whether it is a machine generated are human generated. There are tools emerging to avoid such type of uh, malpractices. OK, so there is a counter tools are also coming. So we have to be aware of that and never try to cheat that. I have written this. I have written this article. I have written this blog at all. It is very easy to catch. Yesterday my son came and told he sent one message. I immediately asked it. It is a generated text, right? I asked yes. He told. OK, that means my natural language is different. What he used to communicate is different. It was very polished. It is very professional and uh, very humble. All the languages there in the text what he sent to me. Then I immediately within a fraction of a second, I said it's not ever over. It is something age and right, right? So I think that's uh, so what is it? What is your goal? Do you want to ban or continue chat GPT in academic institutions? Yeah, Professor Rao, I would yes. like to Yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, as a academician, usually I uh, know that uh, uh, they have to write on the question paper that students also use their own language to answer any question. Okay, that is more. No, hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. So usually, what we do, we ask the students, students that they have to use their own language whenever they are writing some answer. The question paper. Okay, but nowadays this kind of tools uh, uh, get easier for them. Okay, that they don't know that what they actually want. They are asking to the machine and what actually they are writing on behalf of that question. Okay, so it's very obvious that the human language and the machine language both are you no know, very uh, are different. As you told that it's a polished, it's very professional. So that kind of answer when we are 
receiving from the answer sheet or some other way okay we can easily uh, 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 understand that where the actual answer the come from so but okay, so uh, the thing is, is uh, that, uh, do you not, want to uh, continue or ban chat gpt in academic institutions what is the view but it's not uh, that uh, the technology or the things whatever we are using right now the chat gpt it is a good thing okay so i usually uh, want to tell uh, to tell you some one thing that if the students or any human beings if they want to and ask some question on the chat gpt they will get more knowledge on that because this this is uh, a language which okay. is accumulated okay. all the yeah. uh, refined uh, anybody else uh, professor anybody else wants to speak Share their thoughts. Yeah, I would like to ask the participant if they want to participate. They can ask the question, or they Any can answer this question. Students also can ask the question. Do you want to ban or continue chat GPT during studies? Hello. Yep. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Dr. Vijaya from Wellington Institute of Management, Mumbai. Uh, I am also a part of uh, research and business analytics team over here in, as a assistant professor. And uh, actually, this this question would be like very straightforward. It's a ban or a continue. It is like as you have already said, sir, uh, professor, that you have given an example that uh, as ChatGPT, I would not be able to give the answer. Like whenever a user is there, user needs to be a smart enough to use, make use of the ChatGPT very well. It's not about directly we can ban or we can continue. It's like up, uh, up to the uh, use. How are we uh, using it? It has okay. a great potential. It has really a great potential. So if I will, if I wanted to choose ban or continue, I would choose the second option that is continue uh, with a proper uh, make use of the proper uh, way of strategy. Correct. Thanks, uh, Dr. Vijay Patil. Thanks so much. Yeah. So let me conclude this question with my thoughts. Uh, I think uh, we need to introduce some standards for academic integrity and the responsible use of not just chat GPT. If you want to promote, you cannot stop. And there is no way you can say control and all that doesn't work. It will happen. But you might need to define some specific responsible and ethical AI standards and policies in the academic institution. Maybe some national level might be there. That is one thing where everybody should aware. Then you position Chat GPT as a teacher, mentor, and guide. It's not like just simply giving something and taking it all. It's like another teacher, another mentor. Okay. You need to define the boundaries. Then you need to try the students to use Chat GPT as a learning tool or a validation, tool, not for copying, not for cheating and all. It's all again comes with uh, uh, all those human values and conclude that. Then coach uh, the teachers to acquire new knowledge within shorter time. This is a fantastic tool for the teachers, professors and all. They really need not go through some thousands and thousands of pages of the web and all. They want to quickly get something on an area which they are not aware. I think these tools will be very much useful. Then uh, you need to verify the authenticity of the work, the human generated or machine generated. And you also can detect uh, uh, plagiarism, which is the already low, but today it's not only limited to plagiarism, it is also whether human generated or uh, machine generated. And use chat GPT for higher order thinking skills, not for rudimentary jobs. Okay, this is one. The chat GPT create jobs or displace jobs. In the interest of the time, I am now moving forward. And the jobs that will be impacted because of the generative AI tools, chat GPT is only one example. One is the content creation, technical writing and journalism and uh, legal assistants and paralegals, market research analysts, teachers and personal financial advisors, customer service agents, speech writers, language translators, low end software developers, image generators, artists, okay, and voiceover guys, all those things will be there. Okay, so we have to now create new jobs. Some of the things like uh, you generated the content, right? Then you can have content uh, interrogate, uh, verify, verifiers or validators, AI trainers, data scientists. There are so, so many new jobs will be created. Okay. And there will be so many opportunities for startups. And so what is my point of discussion here to conclude here is, let me come to the last part of my session is, one is I think we talk about human intelligence, then 
replicating that to artificial intelligence we are doing it narrow ai or artificial general intelligence and uh, uh, probably the super intelligence but the generative ai is just in between narrow, narrow ai and artificial general intelligence it is not at reach that level of artificial general intelligence so you have so many examples you have seen so now it is important in the human values and ethics perspective what are the values i think that will guide us Whereupon also earned billions of dollars of money. Ratan Tata also earned billions of dollars of money. But there is a difference. The path what they have taken, right? The human values could be it is a generosity, social support, transparency, integrity, or not, right? And selflessness. Okay, how to uh, probably share the knowledge. There are so many human values are there. Okay, if the the people who are developing these algorithms and generative AI models. are wrong and bad then you will get very wrong language models at the um, generative ai tools okay so it is very important who is training those tools number one and number two it is also very important who is using these tools right even human beings it is very difficult for us to manage today that means there are new policies new regulations and new acts needs to be introduced for responsible ai and ethical ai but we have to skip the military and defense because there are rogue countries around the surrounding our country and there should not be any regulations for uh, defense and army we have got ourselves thank you so much uh, thank you rao sir for your valuable insights on the generative ai and their ethical values uh, now i would like to call mr bala To say something about this topic, give his uh, opinion about this generative AI and the human values. So please, over to you. Thank you, Avijit. Uh, I believe uh, we sir okay. has really set the overall context. Avijit, please confirm if you are able to hear me clearly and you are able to see my content. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible as a audience. Thank you. We yes, have truly set the context. In fact, I have trimmed my presentation after hearing him because man, much of the content which he was trying to refer almost or all is the same. But uh, wanted to give you some perspective on from the GPT 4.0 what we are witnessing today, whether it is a boon or a bane. So we all know that uh, ChatGPT is so popular, but ChatGPT is only a consumer-facing interface. But behind the scene, which is really making it possible, is generative AI. Uh, generative AI is primarily when you try to drill down. It's all about the large language models or the foundational models, which are responsible for you to develop such kind of a constructs and create such consumer-facing interfaces. Hence, it is very, very critical and important for you to understand the importance of it. I just wanted to play this particular video for your reference. I'm not sure whether you're able to hear or not, but let me give you a glimpse of it. So uh, I think uh, audio is not coming up, probably. Uh, your flight was cancelled. The airline has sent a voucher. Audio is okay, sir. Can play. You're able to hear, right, audio? So this particular video was a kind of a thing which has been uh, created as part of the uh, Google's Gmail launch. Now it's up. Now it's up. Now it's up. Yeah. So basically, this video was uh, created as part of the Sundar Pichai's launch, where he is integrating the generative AI concept into the Gmail. Where it is trying to propagate the thought that it will simplify your all re overall reply responses. So the example was trying to illustrate when you receive a kind of a redemption voucher for a flight which has been cancelled. Uh, for you to ensure that you don't want to use the voucher, but you want the entire money to be refunded back. So this video was trying to provide that kind of a information how you can compile that entire construct and do that. So to help me write is a kind of a capability which will allow you to compile the response to the customer uh, to the mail what you have received 
over and double what you can do is if you feel that not satisfied but if you want elaborations you can give additional prompts in the generative AI context one of the important element one of us every one of us need to remember is all about the prompts the prompts gives a kind of a information or a kind of a prompt engineering is a new role which is getting a evolved over the period of time with the generative AI. In fact, uh, this kind of a role you might be start listening to it. It gives a kind of an indication to the generative AI model what level of response, whether it is a summarized response, detailed response, creative response, elaborative response. So constructs can be completely varied based on the kind of questions what you're trying to ask. So when you're developing the generative AI models, it's not only the models what you need to generate, but the ability to train the models with the right prompts make important sense. So having said that, I just wanted to give you a kind of a perspective on how the generative AI has been evolved over the period of time and what it is trying to context, contextualize in the context of overall consumption. As VSR also mentioned, today generative AI is all about uh, taking the uh, inputs in the form of text and producing the images, text, audio, video, and code as well. The, the most important uh, capabilities of the drivers today, what I see is, a developer productivity. People say that I will be able to generate the code by just giving a small prompt. Second important area which we see is about the uh, reimagined business functions. Many of the business functions today can be completely reimagined. And third is creating intelligent conversations and interactions with the systems. So generating any kind of such kind of a task is very, very critical. But when you try to choose any kind of a generative AI model, don't try to apply generative AI context for everything. Only when you see that there is a possibility for creating and generating a new content, use generative AI. If you feel based on the input, you can automate the mundane task, use generative AI, but with certain intelligence. If you wanted to translate the context from one language to another language, use generative AI. Fourth, if you wanted to analyze certain things and derive insights, use generative AI. Fifth, if you want to summarize any content, you need to use generative AI. These are the five important tasks one need to really look at when you're trying to apply generative AI in the full context. Just giving you a kind of a flavor of thought of what generative AI trends and outlook is all about. So you can see the future is completely predicted. If not 2024, probably in the near future, you may start seeing that 50% of the code which gets generated can be coming from the machine itself. What does it entail? It may say that uh, for, in fact, uh, Microsoft has already released a kind of a benchmark indicating that 46% productivity can be applied utilizing the GitHub uh, Copilot. Copilot is one of the uh, outcome of the OpenAI initiatives. In fact, OpenAI, when you're really looking at, there are three important initiatives which they have spent. One is what you see today, the chat GPT. Second is GitHub Copilot. Third is about uh, DAL-E, which takes the text and generates the beautiful images. So all these things are possible and uh, you can generate the functional code, working functional code uh, as part of your prompt. In the future, you may also see many, many of your marketing messages, drug development, drug discovery processes, and a lot of content which is getting generated in the quarterly reports. And many of the test data, the augmented test data can be completely generated out of this generative AI models. You see this, uh, uh, is going towards improving the developer efficiency. This is what the market is trying to look from the generative AI context. From, but from the, there is also regulatory compliance angle which is associated to it. You can see that as we are speaking, European Union is trying to come up with a kind of a law indicating that uh, much of these particular applications are prone to risk because if you are giving any kind of a biased responses, any responses, if it is blindly believed, which is machine generated without having any kind of a validation time can lead to a lot of disasters. So that is the reason European Union is coming with a classification of the applications which will be low, medium, moderate or high risks. Of over and above, they are trying to impose a lot of responsibility controls, safety controls, uh, bias, less bias free controls and uh, trustworthy AI computing is becoming a very important norm in the industry. What does that mean? It is trying to give you an understanding that uh, much of these particular concepts need to be trustworthy and they need to respect the ethical aspects of the AI to be taken care. But as uh, the human value is what you are trying to look at, you may see that any particular technology can be used for the good purpose and also for the bad purpose. 
you need to <coughs> balance these particular things in the right way. But in order to ensure that the, any technology is not utilized in a bad way, you can impose a lot of controls and make it uh, happen in a good way. That is the reason you see today, whatever the Microsoft, which has uh, Microsoft and OpenAI is working together to see that there is a moderation APS which are placed. There are filled content filter APS which are placed. There are data residency rules which are placed, which is ensuring that any response which is generated from this GPT interfaces are completely moderated and given. Earlier, when the chat GPT was released, even to be able to go and say that I want to know the preparation of the bomb, it used to give the complete steps. You can even fool the machines also, but with a lot of uh, uh, different level of prompts, different angles of the prompts, models have been trained in such a way that any unethical responses, any responses which are against the safety norms are definitely gets filtered and does not get responded. Having said that, I just wanted to give my view of the overall evolution because it's very important for you to understand. AI is not new. It is there from 50s and 60s. And generating AI is also not new. It was existing from last one decade. People are trying to work on that. In fact, uh, I myself worked on the GPT-1 and GPT-2.0 in uh, developing a couple of applications where we were thinking that how can you uh, completely mimic the consulting uh, experience into a tool. So we developed it called uh, Traxus, where we integrated some of the consulting advices. If you are going on a consulting for the modernization services, or if you're going on enterprise architecture assessments, we generally cons consultants go and ask a few questions and get some kind of responses to it. So we modeled that entire consultant uh, expertise into a system and we were able to draw up the static inferences based on the responses given for the assessment. Later, we have also ex extended this particular subject to include the dynamic inferences. What it allows is it will allow you to uh, question, capture the responses, draw the static and dynamic inferences. Dynamic inferences are coming from the public, public repository which has been trained. And uh, finally, the document of assessment document gets generated automatically by the generative AI application. So getting the life cycle of that entire consulting engagement and hacking that as part of the model. Creates a bigger, bigger uh, productivity gain for uh, uh, to scale up your services. Sometimes you may not find the right resources to do that. Such kind of a model if it is existing, you'll be able to still manage the workload. So GPT-1 was uh, primarily was focusing on uh, training some of the supervised uh, 12 important tasks uh, when you're trying to compare. GPT-2 was extended to provide a uh, different language modeling data sets with a zero shot learning, what we call. So what does zero shot learning means? The public corpus, which is there around uh, the GPT-3.5 is to train on the 570 gigabytes of data with 175 billion parameters. While GPT-4, as we have mentioned, it's more than one trillion parameters under which it has been trained. The corpus is even running into the petabytes. <clears throat> so, so basically, GPT-3 was heavily focusing on that space. And now today, what you see, GPT is an extension of it. Now, GPT-4 is a large multi-model model, what we call, uh, which accepts the images and text as inputs, and it can also provide a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, responses which is more human like behavior and uh, today many professional and academics are really leveraging this to drive that particular service areas. I wanted to exhibit a specific caution because we are not trying to talk about uh, the GPT in the context of the human values. There are important risks what we need to be aware when you're trying to look at it. There are every particular technology has specific capabilities, limitation and risk, but you need to always find out a way to mitigate those things. Some of the important risks which we normally see, which is getting moder which is getting controlled and moderated through the moderation APIs, is hallucinations. Because today, people start believing whatever the chat GPT is giving is a uh, final response, and people need to accept that response. So, if you start believing in that, it will be a false hallucinations which you need to really target. So, that is an important risk which you need to control. I would always advise and say that. Any response which comes from the GPT, use it as an aid or complementing agent of response, but do not treat it as a final. You use your critical thinking to validate that particular response. Today, you have a lot of Wikipedia content. Anything which is written in Wikipedia cannot be blindly trusted. 
you need to take it with a pinch of salt apply your critical thinking understand the source of the input from where it is coming uh, then you start building it second important risk is any gpt machines which if it is able to provide any kind of a harmful content misinterpreting this particular content we need to target to eliminate that so any awful content need to be completely targeted and looked at the possibilities of uh, moderated filtered and not produced as an output for the consumption and there are many times you may see that uh, there will be a harmful representation of the individuals and uh, uh, the kind of a representation of the thoughts which is coming uh, in, in fact it's a false representation of that particular information can lead to a incorrect conclusions of our understanding such kind of information also need to be prohibited and stopped and similarly the privacy and cyber security space playing a very important role to ensure that uh, these risks need to be properly mitigated and uh, any kind of a <clears throat> over reliance of such kind of a data need to be really looked at so if you are able to counter this particular risk you will be able to make a bigger and bigger uh, mit uh, risk mitigation approach and strategy you can define and improve the such kind of a technologies to leverage as a boon to the uh, human now just wanted to touch upon as part of the boon what kind of a capabilities what you can completely leverage uh, one of the important area which you can really look at is as part of some of the potential applications what you can really look at is uh, creative making a creative applications now some of the representative thoughts were given by vsr also where you can create stories where you can create poems when you can create some of the value added text content and the research filters which you can also bring in so basically using the gpt4.0 because it has been trained in such a volume of tasks skills knowledge you have an opportunity to generate a new form of a text or a content or a music or a literature which can provide a kind of a uh, new expressions can be obtained from that so today we see that many creative creative consultants leverage chat gpt for creating such kind of a creative applications or outputs and uh, which makes the content to be much more realistic in nature so in fact you can go and say for creating a poem on your sibling or any kind of a nephew or in case any kind of a relation what you carry uh, describe and it will be able to provide that poetry the storytelling is definitely possible you can create a genre you can create the kind of a theme under which you can definitely create that kind of a storytelling uh, further to that you have uh, this something called gans gans are uh, generative adversarial networks what we call it creates a generous very very uh, realistic images compiling from the different uh, images so basically it's a kind of a combination of the computer graphics and uh, designs uh, it can take a pieces of the elements from the different sources and make that particular thing possible and uh, today uh, it has been targeted to look at using the gan images we can create an entire movie the characters which will be running in this particular movie we may not exist in the real, real life but uh, it has an ability to perform the things so meta humans can be created and uh, you just feel that uh, the representation of you are there in the meta humans that is what the all metaverse areas what we are trying to look at combining that metaverse and ai you can create a, a multitude of applications in that space second important area is the productivity enhancements i mentioned that developer productivity enhanced uh, in intelligent interactions can play a very important role when you try to bring that uh, generative ai into context of human brain into the machine and if machine start responding much like a human your interactions will be much more intelligent your interactions will be much more real in nature and creating such kind of a uh, platforms really make a big difference some of these content creation platforms like antreader and dbot.io really leverage this particular generative ai uh, to assist the artists and designers creating a unique and inspiring values of those things uh, that, this is one of the important area what you can really look at the second area where i third area which i prom, prom, prominently see that use of uh, uh, gpt models uh, or generative ai models is problem solving uh, there is always a concern that if i publish my code in the chat gpt it will be public but you have an opportunity to create your own uh, subscription environment in the azure open ai which is much more private in nature where 
your content is not opened up for any kind of a knowledge training of the model, but it is sitting in private data set and you will be able to manage your outputs and the data residency rules which are applied ensures that your content is not moving out of your uh, zone. So today many code bases can be given for problem solving, troubleshooting, debugging, and similarly many of the data sets uh, can be leveraged for drug discovery process, can be looked at the financial advices. So different streams uh, of the knowledge areas can be leveraged this particular space to a great level. And uh, DeepMind, which is uh, one of the important uh, initiative of Alpha, uh, DeepMind Alpha Fold is an important initiative under the generative AI, is really making a significant progress in protein folding prediction. This is a breakthrough in the biology segment making an important drug discovery and making it possible this particular structures. Uh, the protein structure uh, understanding and enhancements are becoming very, very critical. The last segment which I wanted to touch upon is chat GPT has a pain. GPT-4 dot has a pain, I would say. Today, when I speak, we try to see that there is a lot of ethical concern. This is where the human values are getting compromised. Where when technology gets compromised and they, today you see that there are deep fake videos can be created using this generative AI models where the image you might be speaking, but when the when you're trying to use a defect videos, you can put down your face with covered with um, any of the popular uh, celebrity as if they are speaking. And this becomes a very important uh, way you are trying to communicate as they are communicating and modeling. It's becoming today very, very difficult even with the computer vision algorithms to capture whether it is a defect video or not. So ethical concerns are possible and uh, Ensuring a responsible use of such kind of a uh, harmful videos need to be very, very important and crucial. And that's where the responsible AI guidelines are getting released for, from every respect. The second important uh, segment which you need to be aware is a bias. So any kind of a bias on unintended uh, uh, consequences can be resulted because you see that any models which get trained in a particular element. It could be the political bias, financial bias, human bias, gender bias, it could be anything. So so even racial bias. So that can really influence your own entire decision making. That's where the explainable AI is coming into the context, which ensures that the bias free uh, responses are getting generated. In fact, um, recently, um, not recently, three, four years ago, I believe uh, when Amazon did the interviews, there is a, the model which has been built was a, having a uh, female bias, basically, so in fact, male bias, I would say. Any any resume which is coming as from the males were getting shortlisted, but, but female resumes were getting filtered and rejected. Such fairness is very, very important in the element. Any bias can lead to a incorrect consequences and that need to be mitigated thoroughly. The third segment, which is a bane, I would say, is about the job displacement, which is very, very critical today. We have seen that uh, VSR mentioned about few of the job areas which is getting uh, re displaced. Like it could be the junior lawyers or it could be the financial advisors, which has the ability to get uh, mundane and the machines can easily replicate their knowledge and able to advise the customers appropriately. And uh, so there is a definite concern uh, for such kind of scenarios, which I would say that we should be able to leverage that and uh, make a bigger, bigger impact. So with that particular thoughts, I would uh, just leave this particular segment by saying that we all need to collectively pledge for the future of AI, which is highly responsible, safety, trustworthy, and ethical. These are very, very critical for our future. And uh, if you are able to strike the balance between the AI usage and respecting the human values, we'll go places. But if you are not able to manage with this uh, functions of responsibility, trustworthy, safety, and ethical, we may get into a compromise situations where machines can dominate us. Indeed, we none of us want that to that situation to arise. With that thought, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Avijit, for providing us opportunity to share our knowledge. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, thank and you, no Mr. questions. And uh, you have put uh, the very. Yes, yes. Obviously, we have asked uh, the question and I request all the participants, they have to raise their question on the chat forum so that we can ask our respective uh, panel members. And uh, now I would like to uh, call Mr. Chandra Dasaka to give 
some lights on this talk. Sir, please, over to you. <clears throat> Thank you. You know, <laughs> we had definitely very interesting and uh, uh, very useful uh, presentations by both uh, Bala and VSR Garu. You know, it's very good. You know, we are looking at the uh, different uh, you know perspectives. Now, as you said, uh, as we had, electricity is a good servant, but a bad master. <laughs> okay. Uh, similarly, we are seeing a lot of advantages, but more disadvantages. You know, it is going to because the topic is what how to strike a balance in the digital area, you know, between AI and human values. It this is going to be impacted. Okay. The the people are going to lose jobs. Okay. And also, you know, as uh, VSR was saying, uh, suppose I want to apply for a job, I will ask this uh, GPT to create my profile in a way that attracts, that takes the attention of the people who are looking into that. Okay. How to create a, a profile also is done. In the software development life cycle, every phase is covered by now uh, GPT. Okay, now you are looking at these things. You know, also, uh, for example, the roles of pre-sale jobs, salesperson jobs, uh, you know, call centers, etc. These are all going to be very badly impacted. Okay, and uh, as VSR is saying, he received a message from his son, and he could get it that it is from a using a. Okay, so how to uh, draw the uh, how to have the balance? Is definitely an, you know very important thing, but probably as we progress, as we start uh, getting into using uh, GPT more and more, then probably we'll start to feeling the disadvantages, you know, more and more. Yes, as Balaji said, uh, it's creative and the productivity will increase. Uh, the problems will be solved faster, but the concerns are ethical, you know, because everything uh, the the GA is trained on the data we gave. And if it is biased, obviously it, we will get biased responses from the uh, system. We cannot take it for granted that whatever is uh, given by the uh, GPT is the solution. No, you have to use your creative thinking. The, the, that is for sure. Okay. And then, but the other positive thing is it brings standardization. Now all the profiles may look like same. <laughs> OK, um, so but also like you know, second opinion when you are going to a doctor, you, you feel let us take second opinion. Now, if everyone uses this uh, GP, uh, GPT, you will get to the same opinion everywhere. OK, so I am really concerned about how the future is going to be. You know, whatever area you are looking into, it is definitely it has its own impact there. Uh, but we started using GPT now. Slowly, with the, it is getting, uh, you know, the acceleration is picking up. Now we should start feeling the, the other things. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Avijit Ji, uh, Professor Avijit Ji. Uh, uh, I wanted to share my PPT, but somehow there seems to be a problem. But thank you very much. This is a very good uh, information for me. By you know, thanks to both uh, VSR and uh, Balagan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Dasaka. Uh, I would like to ask our participants. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes. So I would like to our participants. So if they have any question in their minds, so they can please ask or. Uh, Mr. Panelist and the speakers. Any questions? Actually, one important thing is if you want to be successful in generative AI, we should know how to ask questions. They are called prompts. Okay, that yes. is uh, a new discipline emerging all over the world called prompt engineering. If we don't learn as students here or teachers how to ask the questions, even to these generative AI tools, you don't get the right answers. Indians right. have inherently a problem of not asking questions. I think if we don't learn how to ask questions, we will not be successful in this generative AI. Yeah, there is a saying, if you are not asking questions, 
you are history hesitating to learn yep yes it is very obvious that uh, whenever we are inquiring some a uh, question on the chat gpt okay so they will inevitably they will write different uh, kind of answers whatever they have trained on this model okay but it's very, very important that whenever as a students as a researchers or as a, as a academician or any uh, general human being okay when we are asking some questions we have to go thoroughly what actually machine should give it, give it to us actually and we have to understand what they are actually writing whether the questions were, were, were actually are actually asking what is relevant to the answer or not okay so that is very important thing we cannot uh, blindly uh, believe on the ai uh, uh, based text because it's a very much uh, you know that uh, smart text uh, you not understand that how that things are relevant or they are integrating all the answer to you okay some of the times we have even you can uh, you know that notice that uh, beyond the uh, you know that some uh, future aspects of the questions the ai cannot give you the answer because that model has been trained after the some period of time and it cannot exceed their uh, limit they cannot exceed their limitations okay so that times the uh, human beings are uh, like users they can you know that uh, find some uh, difficulties to uh, uh, accumulate all the things in uh, through the chat gpt or the generative ai that is a very important thing so whenever we are asking some questions to the uh, chat gpt sometimes for example we are posting a different kind of post on the uh, social media as a digital marketing uh, content okay it's very easy that uh, we can uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, get uh, text or the promotional uh, advertisement text from the chat gpt but it is uh, very obvious that we have to check bit by bit whether we are not providing any kind of misinformation to the audience or not okay so that is also very important so uh, this is my opinion on that uh, you know that genetics but uh, however mr uh, ano bala and uh, mr uh, dasak as well as mr rao they have uh, put their, their uh, you know that uh, uh, concentrated on one things that this is the machine language okay but it is wholly depend on the machines but how we have to use that is the main ethics of the human okay we have how we have to uh, handle this information on behalf of the society or the society at large because machine producing the information whether we have to take it as a positive way or the negative way or we can spread the information in the general uh, public or the users okay so my opinion that uh, before uh, uh, you know that uh, any kind of uh, uh, information whenever we are extracting from this kind of generative model or the generative ai model we have to be aware that what actually we are writing or what actually we are asking the question and what we are getting so we have to go thorough and then only we can put our uh, for the general uh, use uh, any uh, uh, other opinion from the audience Great. Thank you, Vijay, and thank you all the participants. We all expect uh, you to use thank the GPT you. in the right spirit. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, sir. Hope we'll uh, meet you soon again, sir. Uh, just pay on that. Uh, uh, your videos uh, must be on. So we have to take one photograph. Yes, Sunil, hello. Yes, sir. We have done it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can we leave now, Sujit Ji? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Thank you, Bala. Thank, Thank you, you. Vijay Sargaru. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Thanks, Professor Thank Sujit. You know, this is good opportunity for us. Yes, sir. It's my honor that you have given your time and uh, all of you actually. Okay, <laughs> at the very main time, Mr. Rao has joined. It's very, uh, you know, that uh, yeah, I'm very happy that all you are, you know, that in the same platform we are discussing here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>